Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I want to go over footing detail, a little bit of some footing plans on this little project that we're doing. And I want to show you all, if you don't know how to read plans, then this might be a valuable video for you. So basically what we're looking at right here is we're looking at the foundation and first floor framing for this second story addition we're adding. So this is the existing floor plan and this is the existing addition right here and we're adding a second story to this addition so to do that we're going to have to strengthen up the existing foundation you see these yellow lines that's going to be a new beam that's going to be in my ceiling and that's going to receive the second floor right that's a glue lamb beam and that's going to be one there there's going to be one there and then there's going to be one there okay those are all new glue lamb beams and those are going to receive our second story and that's going to carry all the load of the second story so you have to go and make sure your footings are done the way the engineer lined them up so if you look at this plan here you see here you see all the little squares those are all my under pads that we're going to be putting underneath the existing foundation to make the foundation stronger so if you see here this is an f3 this is an f2 see that f2 and then we have this one is an f2 we have an f3 right here another f2 so then if you go to your details and you see your footing schedule you see an f2 that's going to be two foot six by two foot six wide by 12 inch deep then you're going to have three number five going each way then you can see this is the detail s stands for structural so if you see an S and then a number, it's going to be your structural sheets on your plans. So there's architectural, then there's structural. So you'll see an S7. So you go to structural 7, detail 12, and detail 16. And that'll tell you how to build this pad. Okay, and then once you do that, then you go back to the site and you go over to the corner. You dig out all the dirt and you excavate and basically undermine your existing foundation like that. You see that? That's the existing foundation. You can see it's basically floating right there. And then you can see we have the number five rebar and we have it dialed in and we have it epoxied in. And it's epoxied in with the 3G epoxy. And that epoxy has to be inspected by a deputy inspector as you're injecting the epoxy and inserting the number five rebar. So you have to call a deputy inspector before you get the city inspector out. Then he's gonna observe you cleaning the holes out, making sure there's no dust in them. And he's gonna observe you using the right product, injecting the, uh, in, you know, injecting the epoxy. And then he's gonna observe you put the rod in. And he's gonna watch you do that on all of these dowels that have epoxy in. Okay, and you see that bottom all thread down there that has that three by three plate washer on it? It has a 5 8 galvanized nut on the bottom too. That's all galvanized and that, that it comes all the way up to this you see this right here that's called a through a through rod it's going to go all the way down into the footing and it's going to catch the load and that's for a hold down you see this four by six post and you see that bucket we have up there that's a column cap and that column cap is going to receive the beam that's going to sit on it and then it's going to shoot all the way over to that column cap and it's going to receive the load going down that beam and then it's going to go to that under pad the dirt's a little bit blown out right here because it was hard to do it so we built a little form but we're going to pump it on top of that and fill that up right under there and then we'll just pump in here and fill this up till it gets all the way up to dirt level grade level right here then we'll be good with our under pad this will be locked in and this is for an hdu okay so this is an hdu right here this is a heavy duty hold down you see right here this is an hdu4 see that it's an hdu4 so this is a heavy duty hold down and that's actually gonna bolt it's gonna bolt on right there afterwards and then you have sds screws that locks into the post now most of the time you have hold downs on the end of your shear walls so this is a shear wall right here and if you see right here, it's a number one shear wall. If you watch one of my other videos, if you watch one of my under vid other videos, I explain shear walls, but you see here's a number one shear wall. So then you go to your shear wall and you say, okay, I need an HDU2 at the end of my shear wall there. And then I need an HDU2 at the end of my shear wall there. So 
we have an HDU two at the end of the four by right there. And then we have another HDU over there. And they're calling out for HDU twos, but that's the minimum you can use. I'm gonna use HDU fours. And then I also threw one in right here for this support. Now, if you look on the details, that's this right here. It shows an HDU two on the corner but it doesn't show an HDU4 next to this four by six post. That's right here, I'm gonna carry the load. I called my engineer and I said, hey, I have a couple HDU4s extra. I'd like to set one on my four by six beam just to put it there in the middle of my shear wall, but at least it'll help this, have to help this beam right here be more secure and everything will be locked down and we have our load transferring down into the pad. He said, absolutely, let's do that. So then we threw one on that beam over there. We threw another one on that beam on the other side there. Then we threw one on that beam. The plans called out for one there, but it didn't call one for the inside. So we got approval from the engineer to do all this. Now, most of the time when you get builders and they come to your properties, in your you know, property, they, they do the very minimum what's on the plans. And they say, this has been approved by the city and it only says three hold downs. When I come to the property, and we start doing our work and we start actually doing the work in the field versus just sitting in the office and approving plans and engineering and design. When we come out to the field and we start actually building it. And what I like to do a lot is sort of just make the plans a little better or upgrade them a little bit. Now you have to run that by the engineer. It's gonna cost the builder more money. It's gonna cost you more money, a little bit more money, but it'll give you a better structure in the end one, in, in the end run, because in the future, if this structure starts to fall apart, it's going to be on the builder. Okay. In California, you have a 10 year warranty that you have to do for anything structural. So me building this house, building it all up, if it starts to sink or cave in or beams start to cave in, my general liability insurance will have to kick in at that point and come in and fix it or I'll have to come out of pocket and fix it. But that's why I have insurance to take care of those things. But my structures have to last a minimum of 10 years for structural. So that being said, if I think it needs something extra, I'm gonna put it there just so I can protect myself and I don't have to worry about anything for those 10 years. If it lasts 10 years without any deficiencies, then it's probably gonna last 100 years. It's the way I look at it, if it's properly maintained and taken care of. But if you see here, I added a couple HDUs. You know, we did that just to make the structure much stronger. I'll shoot some more videos in the future and you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically you can see we cut off the back side of this house and we're adding a second story right here. Our stairs are gonna be going up. That's the right side of my stair stairwell right there. So our stairs are gonna be shooting up. There's gonna be some more walls being built in. We have concrete pour coming in on Monday and we just got approval from the city. We passed city inspection. So we're ready to go. But I just wanted to share this all with you. If you have to do an under pad on your house and, and underpin an under pad, this is how it should look, right? To do a good job. And then also I wanted to share with you all just a little bit on how to read the plans. So I have a YouTube short where I show how to read the shear walls. You can you check that video out, but real quick, I'm just gonna, if you wanna know shear wall, see number one, number two, sometimes they'll be a little triangle right there. Instead of an hexagon, you see that number two, it will be a triangle. And you see that number one shear wall, it typically will be a triangle in most plans, like that, a little triangle. And we got an HDU2 on each side. And then what a shear wall means is that you're gonna basically stop the house from moving. So you wanna have that shear value on the house to keep it from racking. So you're gonna be putting st structural grade, strut one plywood or whatever the plans call for on your shear walls. So your plywood will have to get locked to all of the outside or the inside of the framing depending on where your shear wall is gonna be. And then you have to follow the shear wall schedule as far as nailing goes for the shear walls, okay? And so what you do to find out the schedule is you usually go to your typical notes. If you see right here, the typical notes right there for typical detail, see drawing structural detail five. So what I could do is go to structural five and usually there'll be a bunch of typical details on there, see? And you got typical, typical, typical stud wall opening. And this is my shear wall right here. You can see I have my HDUs on each side. Those are the hold downs with the all thread going down and embedded into the concrete. And then you can see my sill bolts, okay? So to figure out your nailing on a shear wall and your sill bolts on a shear wall and your hold downs, all that, 
go to your plans and your plans will show you where the hold downs go which is typically at each end of the shear wall and then you go to your shear wall schedule so if it's a number one so that's a number one then you use 10 d nails for all your nailing on that plywood paneling and then you're going to nail the nails six inches on the seam on all of the seams basically on the outside areas of the plywood so like all the outside edges of the plywood will be six inch spacing that's outside and then the inside inside field it will be 12 inches so the infield will be 12 inches so that means inside of the plywood when it's up on the wall you only have to have 12 inch nailing but on the outside edges where they butt each other you have to have six inch nailing okay so it shows that you got six and twelve and then it shows right here for your hold down you got five you got to use five eighth which we are we're using five eighth all thread um galvanized because we're going down into concrete and we're epoxying down into concrete and if you have any sleepers that are moisture treated which that's a sleeper right there that piece of wood that's on the bottom sitting on the concrete treated piece of wood that's a sleeper that's going to stay there forever and your joists are going to sit on that and then your rim joists are going to be on the outside so that being said you want to have galvanized hardware if it's going to go down to the concrete and it's going to go through treated lumber no matter what so i just like to use galvanized hardware now you don't have to have a galvanized plate if you're going on to regular you know douglas fir but if this was a moisture treated bottom plate then that should be galvanized as well okay so anyways this is my sill bolts and it shows my sill bolts, five eighths every 42 inches. So between this shear wall, I need to have sill bolts every 42 inches, which we do. Those are the yellow ones, okay? And those shear bolts shows you right here. You gotta have a minimum 10 inch embedment into the existing footing. All right, so we got all our bolts. Now on this one, we have solid blocking going through our bays and then our all thread comes all the way up and lands on our top plate which is up here that's what we have going on here and we switched out this is an existing structure so we took out all the old flooring we supported the wall and had it floating and then we ripped out the old um, bottom plate and we put in a new um, three by four bottom plate so that way it's upsized and it can carry the load a lot stronger to receive the second floor right here because we're gonna have two by 12 joists running across carrying the load and then we got all of our glue lamp beams three of them and these beams have a half inch camber in the middle of a beam if you don't know what a half inch camber means in the mid span it means in the middle of these huge beams going from that steel bucket to this bucket and it's going to cantilever out about two feet in the middle of that beam in the mid span the beam crowns about a half inch it has a little bit of a hip in it and the reason why is because that's going to be a major structural wall going all the way up to carry to carry my roof load and so any kind of load is going to come down that beam if it has a a, a crown that comes with it engineered it's going to help receive that load instead of dipping down and creating a bow and you'll see reflection on the inside of your house so you don't want that so our engineer called out for a half inch camber so basically it's crowned a half inch it's going to come that way engineered for each of these glue lamb beams they're six inch by 12 inches and then on the second story we have a huge glue lamb beam that's going to be crossing our mid span that's about 25 foot by six by 15 by 25 foot glue lamb beam with the half inch camber as well so that's for the second story and you'll see that later but as you can see here we're moving along and if you're wondering why we're keeping all these old two by fours the plans say keep existing so if it says keep existing there even though the walls are rotted keep the walls keep all the old studs just put new studs next to them so that way you have a structurally sound wall but make sure you keep all the old studs because in the past inspectors will come and they say you took too much of the existing out now we have to change the plans call it a new structure whatever they're doing so whatever their game is and the reasoning behind that that's on them i just like to make sure i do everything per code and per the plan so that way i'm not going to get caught up and waste my time or my client's time and money so if you find this video valuable remember click that subscribe right now i'm going to be having a lot more videos and uh if you go back on our channel we have a lot of videos already posted on this channel and there's a lot of fun videos and there's a lot of really helpful videos so check them out and if you like our content please subscribe but anyways here's shear wall detail typical stud detail stud wall opening framing so this is a shear wall and if you see here it says 
two by solid blocking. So every area you have your plywood going up and let's say your plywood butts right there and you have a butt joint in the middle. Anywhere you have a butt joint, you're gonna have to put two pieces of two by blocking or you can use like, you can use like a four by four block right there too or you can use two two by fours and that's because you need your six inch nailing in between the bays that goes around your perimeter of the plywood so the only way to get six inch nailing on a bay is to put blocking in there so you can have your six inch nails staggered okay and you're going to want to stagger if you run your next plywood up let's say you run your next plywood up to this and you have your plywood here and you have all these little dots of your six inch um, perimeter nailing and your next plywood's going to come up and you have your six inch perimeter nailing you don't want those nails to line up with those nails you want them to stagger you want them to be in the middle right there next to that dot in the middle in the middle in the middle and then you stagger stagger so when you look at the plywood sheeting it's staggered like a zipper that's what you want and you also don't want your nails to really penetrate through the plywood you want them to be basically flush nailed okay so you can get a flush nailer for your nail gun unless it has an attachment or you know adjustment on it so you can adjust your flush nailer and that's to attach the shear paneling okay so in this video we went over under pads underpinning that's an existing concrete um, continuous foundation with footing that pad where it comes out a little bit that's the footing on the bottom and then that's the stem wall and that's pretty typical for most builds that i see especially out here in california san fernando valley area hollywood beverly hills whatever this is very typical out here so this is how you under pad and give strength to your second story just like this all right remember you got to get a deputy inspector and then if you have plans it's probably going to call out for a structural observation from your engineer so you're going to want to get that too so have your engineer come out after you have everything checked out deputy inspected you show your structural observation your structural engineer you show him the structural observation that you got from your deputy inspector He's going to look at that and then he's going to come through and look at everything, make sure there's no deficiencies in the build. And then he's going to say, all right, and he's going to write a report as well, approving the concrete pour and we're ready to move forward. Then you have those two forms. Then you call for city inspection. Then your city inspector will come out and he's going to look at those two forms. He's going to file those away and read everything they got to say. He's going to verify and field that is exactly what it's saying on those forms. And then he's going to go through and after he does all his verifying, he's going to sign you off. Okay to pour. And then you're moving forward. So at this stage, it's nice to just always move forward. You don't want to have to fix things. So it's better to check everything, double check everything, and make sure it's right before you actually call for inspection. You see here, I got HDU5s, HDU5s, and then it calls for this little pad right here. You see that pad? This is an F1. We've got an F1, F2, F3, but then if you see this pad, you're like, what is that? What is that pad? There's no F next to it. So if you're looking at that and you're wondering, then you see this detail right here. See this bubble? S7, detail 14. It has a line that comes in with a little square. That means it's talking about that pad. So really fast before I finish this video, I'm gonna go to S7, detail 14, to show you what that pad looks like. Okay, here's S7. And then we're gonna go to detail 14. That is right here. So you see this detail and shows we got a pad here we have our number five rebar running we have it hooked in so we basically make it a grade beam and then we're going to have that running the length and then it has to be these measurements with a new wall coming up okay and then that new wall coming up is going to receive another wall on top of it and that's going to carry all the load and there's going to be a four by four with hdu fives on top of that so this whole detail will teach you how to build that so then you go back over to that. And you look, you see the HDU5 there, there's the HDU5 there. You got that little wall that you have to build. So you have to build a footing, a square footing on the bottom. And you have to build a stem wall coming up. Same with right here, because that's going to receive a wall jogging over too to carry load for the second story. So let me show you what those look like in field so you have an idea. So this is that detail right here, how it looks before we pour concrete. So you can see we have our all our steel down right there for our grade beam. And then also that acts as an under pad and it goes under this existing stem wall footing right here. Then you can see the under pad right there really good. And then we have our forms going up 
for our stem wall. And then we attach moisture treated. That's our sleeper, that's our plate that's gonna always stay there. We attach that to the framing with galvanized nails to the bottom of the framing. Then we put our hardware in there. Once concrete's poured, we pull that nut off and we put a three by three plate washer, galvanized. That's all galvanized because it's touching treated. Okay, and then also before we finish, see this old gas pipe? We're also gonna put something on the bottom of that because that's having contact with this treated wood. We're gonna put something there to create a protection so there's no um, chemical reaction between that treated wood and this galvanized or this uh, gas pipe right here. So look at the footing. See, we have our forms up, so now we can just pump in. We left ourselves room to pump in here. Then we have all our rebar tied in. And then below this is that other wall going this way. And then we have our hole down there for HDU5. And then we have a hole down there. And those are three bolts. Those are going to go all the way down into our, see that? Into our footing, into our pad on the bottom. And those are going to receive beams. There's going to be a little wall. There's going to be a wall going like this. And then it's going to jam over this way. So you gotta be able to see all this stuff and envision it as you're building to come out with a good product. If not, you're just winging it and then you're gonna be fixing a lot of stuff. And if you have a contractor that's that way, they're gonna be either A, wasting their money and your time, or they're gonna be wasting your money and your time. So you just gotta make sure you get a contractor that's on point and they know what's going on. So you see we have another under pad there. Boom, we have that whole under pad here that's gonna receive a glue lamp beam is gonna go up. Or, I'm sorry, a post is going to go up. Glue lamb beam is going to sit on a bucket and it's going to shoot out over there to that bucket. See that? And it's going to cantilever out. Then we're going to build a wall going straight up and then we're going to attach this house, that gable, to the wall to our new second story structure going up. And then you can see there's another under pad here. Boom. See that? Now, when I was first starting out in the business, if someone made a video like this, it would have been so valuable to me as a as someone just starting out in the business because it really would have gave me just that, just that visual that I need. And then I said, oh, I see, that's how I got to do it. Boom, now I got it, consider it done. Because I had the skills, always have the skills to do the work. It's just, you gotta have the experience and know how to do it. Sometimes it takes someone just to show you, to share with you how to do things for you to get it. So I'm gonna show you this. Under pad, this is from the back side. See that? And we had to dig underneath this asphalt so we can actually have a proper under pad there. Right? And we have another one there too. So after we pour, we're gonna backfill that in with dirt, but as much as we need to, but the concrete's gonna come up basically almost about four inches to the top of this grade right here. But you can see this is the exterior wall. We're gonna be cantilevering now about two feet. We're gonna have a whole second story going up, so. If you like this content, remember, hit that like and that subscribe button. Share with anybody you think would be interested in this knowledge. It'd be super awesome. I'm just trying to help people out that need the help, you know, that are, A, they can't afford a contractor and they got a homeowner builder it, or B, they have a contractor that just doesn't know what's going on and he needs help, or C, you're a contractor and you got into this business, but you've never done something like this structural and then you can watch this video and hopefully it helps you rock and then you're a badass contractor or a homeowner builder you know so if you hit that subscribe and like i appreciate you and uh look out for more videos everybody all right kono pro out